I have a haul bag, literally full of five millimeter Dyneema. And I'm about to go to Moab. And with Base Jump Moab, Andy Lewis, I'm gonna go do another zip line. And we've already done one, and the struggle we had before, which we are zip lining on, yes, five millimeter Dyneema, no, you should not do this. We had the eye terminated at the top, but near at the bottom, we didn't know how far we needed it. He held it while I was trying to splice it, and it was sucked. And then it's just not spliced well and you're cutting and and we're moving the pulley up and up and up the mountain. You can see the whole rigging scenario. There's no way you're line gripping this shit. <laughs> Ended up working, but it, it sucked. You can't just terminate the stuff with a knot or you're going to lose 70%. It'll only keep about 30% of the strength. And when we're really pushing the limits of what we should be doing with this stuff, I, we want to keep it thin and tiny and we're also cheap and don't want to buy the bigger stuff. So we have to get the most strength out of this as possible. Also in Sweden, when we rigged the 2.1 kilometer long high line, we were using Dyneema to pull over the webbing. And there's there's no way to grab it. You can't put in a cinder on it. A VT Prusik, I don't think will work. But there is no way other than our winch to work with this stuff. And so you can see all of those complications in our other video. But if I knew this trick that I got from a sailor, then... I may have had both projects go way smoother. And since I'm literally leaving at four in the morning tomorrow to go do this again, why not test it at the last minute? This is what I'm going to call the clutch. Whether or not that is what other people call it, you can let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna splice a basic eye in this. It could be Brummel eye, it could be whatever. And I'm gonna terminate it to this side over here. And I'm only gonna have maybe half a meter or a meter of length here and just cut it and then I'm going to splice this long kilometer long piece of Dyneema into it and then pull it out before it gets to where the taper of of my eye is and pull it out and it might take a minute to pull it all the way through but then when I release it it'll hold and I have this much length as a Chinese finger trap or almost like an ascender, toothless ascender, holding on to this really long piece. So it's like a whoopee sling that's detached. And this can allow us to clove hitch onto a pulley system per se, if this was the loosen, and we could pull it through, milk the thing to hold again, redo the clove hitch, because you can put a knot in it temporarily to put two or three K in on it, and you could pull it through and you could keep doing that until you get the tension you want. And then this will hold it. And if we ever want to derig it, we could always put a soft release on the eye that's attached to the lower anchor or the, the far side anchor, side B, when you're rigging a high line. So how about I show you how I'm gonna splice this simple eye and then how I'm gonna splice the big piece into it. And then we'll pull it to find out if I'm gonna survive or not. If you saw this video, there's a, there's a really good chance we survived. So I'm going to want to have a, a fairly big eye in here. And then I'm going to do one metric foot of berry. And I talk a big game when I'm here at the table. But when I'm out and about, I'm probably going to do three times this much berry. Brummel splice it and lock stitch it because I'm scared. Even though the real risk is the base jumping portion. It's about super good enough that there and I'm not going to taper it in this case let's just see what happens about that much and I'm going to milk it and there we have a fixed eye and this is the end of the taper so I'm going to go one foot two foot I don't need to waste any more than that cut it bluntly right there and I've got two feet to work with I'm not going to go straight down the middle of it just like a whoopee I'm going to start pretty much where I want to just cut through the middle here. And I'm gonna put that on there. And then we're going to splice it about, I don't know, until it gets to the end of that other taper. So right here is uh, the end of my spliced eye. And then I'm gonna have this here. And then basically, this thing is so clutch. Get it? I am going to basically just, I could pull and pull and pull until it gets stuck in my bag. And let's say the bag is my tension. I could just milk it and then, and then it holds. 
I hope. Let's uh, pull on that. No, 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 no. It's coming out. It came out. And this is why I overbury when it really matters. I'm going to try to maximize what I can do with this piece and see if I can get it to grab. So this taper comes here. There's not a lot of difference right there. And then it goes bloop right out there. And this is what you'd be tensioning. But I milked it tight. Oh, please hold. It's slipping. Damn it. And you're dead. Oh, that was so much better. Okay, we just need longer. It's interesting that the spliced eye did not sp uh, slip, but it's only 12 inches buried. Whereas this was two feet buried and it did slip. But that's because when you're pulling on a loop, you're pulling 50% the side that's crunching, the 50% of the side that's inside of there. So you definitely wanna have a lot of berry if you're gonna use one of these clutches. It's supposed to be breaking at 18 and you wanna have that safety ratio because there's not a lot of safety in what we're doing. Hold baby, hold. No, 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 hold, hold. Ah. It's at least pretty neat. All right, so once this thing starts, sli whoa, slipping, it's, it's slipping. So 27 inches is what I got out of that one. And then it's technically higher than we got before. So two new pieces. And I measured this black line over to here to be 39 inches or one meter. And I forgot to account for the fact that the outer layer gets fatter, therefore shorter. Let's see what 33 inches does for us. Hold, baby, hold. Yes. Yes. Almost 18. Now, I'll usually get a, a big variation in results with Dyneema. So if we want to guess why it's lower, it's because this is just sticking right out the side instead of being like this gentle taper that, that it prefers. So it didn't break at the end of this blunt cut uh, for that spliced eye. It broke where it was coming out. So the taper didn't seem to matter too much, uh, though I would do a proper taper and I would uh, stitch this a little bit. Uh, if I'm gonna do this for reals, and I'm gonna make it twice as long. Please don't go risk your life after seeing a successful sample size of one. Let me do that. This might sound a little nerdy, but I literally couldn't sleep the night Matthew Odo told me about this concept. I guess it's kind of common in sailing because they use Dyneema ropes all the time and they need ways to grab it. And so they have mechanical clutches that kind of do the same thing. And they also have well, what we just tested here. And uh, I texted Andy Lewis about it, and I was like, holy shit, this solves every problem we've ever had with Dyneema being this, this limiting factor of how to grab it, especially when we're doing giant stuff, because sometimes we'll rig a fixed line, and we have to pull this tight, and we want it to be a really thin, skinny Dyneema because of wind, because this could be two kilometers long, and because it gets expensive. I mean, we don't need it to be that strong because what we're going to do is clip every 50 meters at the segment, the webbing, and then pull it over. So this would be like a shower curtain rod. And then you would have another one as a shower curtain pulling over a loop and loop and loop of webbing. We'll get into complex highline rigs later, but we, I didn't know how to do that without knowing the exact length of what you're gonna go do. And this just opens up an entire world of zip lines and highlines for us. 